TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live, but by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK, man. Don't forget we do got merch. You get me? Got mine on. Don't forget we got the Patreon. We post there Monday through Friday. Any video that I think should go on YouTube, but I know YouTube might get on that with me, we post it on Patreon as a free video. So you can follow me on Patreon and it'll be free, some videos. Some videos, of course, will not be. Uh, and don't forget, man, Twitch is the most important thing in the world right now. If you ever see me missing in action, Twitch is where I'm going to be still. So, can't pay, we'll take it away, season four, episode eight. Let's get into it. Across the UK, people aged between 25 and 34 are increasingly finding themselves in debt. I'm lying. I'm in that age bracket. Search has shown that in America, though, that over three quarters of young adults have received financial support from their parents. Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor are High Court Enforcement Agents. They oh, work all over England and Wales, seizing property and... This is a special too. Season 4, Episode 8 is a special. I don't know if y'all seen it at the beginning. Collecting debt. Should be negative. Dude. Sunny Blackpool, eh? Always. Today they're in Blackpool to serve a writ on Mr. Daniel Barrett, a self-employed plasterer who owes over six and a half thousand pounds. See what I'm saying? It's in Blackpool. And from my understanding with Blackpool, don't nobody give a, kick, a F in Blackpool. So it, it, it's a possibility it might kick off right now. It's what we have to know. That's how y'all so say it look. kick off. One, there we go, on your right hand side. If Mr. Barrett can't or won't pay today, Stuart and Vic have the right to seize goods to cover the debt. The High Court writ gives the agents the right to make peaceful entry through an unlocked door. Hello? It's all right, it's all right, I've gone. No, don't, don't let them out. I'm not, I'm not, don't worry. Right, what you are you doing? Come on, get in. What are you doing coming in? Uh, we're High Court Enforcement agents. Well, right, I know who you are, okay. but all I want you to do is yeah. stay outside the door, please. I'll be, I'll be staying here at the moment, OK, to show you my ID. Right. So my name's Mr McCracker, okay. Mr Victor. What? We're here for uh, Mr Barrett. Right, Daniel. Yeah, Daniel, That's yeah. That's my son. Yeah. Is he here at the moment or not? No, he's not. He's is actually he working. working. Um, we got a High Court writ basically to take control of goods unless he makes a payment. Is there any chance you can get in touch with him? He's got no money to pay and make a payment and yeah. there's nothing here of his apart from him sleeping here and right. being living here. There's no goods. All the goods are actually ours, mine yeah. and my husband's. But Stuart spots a potential asset. I hear you, ma'am. But we're going to have to see some type of receipts. And this is the messed up part, man. Parents want to do right by their kids. But kids, you got to think about it. They ain't trying to do right by their parents. They putting their parents in debt, not trying to pay off their bills. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, I wouldn't even... Hey, listen, it's a life lesson. If the car outside belongs to Daniel, it could be taken away to pay off the debt. Who owns the vehicle on the driveway? Me. Mm -hmm. Right, have you, you got... see my lab book? Uh, we don't need... We need a sales invoice. The pressure is on. Mrs. Barrett gets her son on the phone. Danny! Law enforcement officers here, they want to speak to you. Right, but you need to speak to them, they want to speak to you. Hello, is that Daniel? Hi, mate, you alright? Daniel, my name's Mr. McCracken, I'm a High Court Enforcement Agent from Dark Clark. Uh, yeah, 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 hi. Right, we've got a High Court writ to collect an outstanding balance, sir, for £6,653. Yeah, carry on, get uh, to the point, mate. Yeah, well, I am getting to the point, I'm explaining why I'm here, so I'm what I'm, what I'm prepared to do. <laughs> hey, that nerve! How you gonna rush the debt collector that's at the door talking to your mom like he finna leave? Bro, come home. For one, you shouldn't be in the house. You've, you've walked in the house on your own without being asked to come in, so That's, you need to leave. No, we won't be doing that, sir, I'm afraid. No, you will be doing. You will. There's nothing, 
Nothing there that you can physically take. I'm not, like I said, sir. Um, where to collect tonight's standing barns is 6,653 pounds. Well, I'm not present at the address and I can't discuss it over the phone. So. Well, While Stuart talks to Daniel, Mrs Barrett shows Vic the paperwork for the car. Well, I'll, I'll be sleeping. It turns out the car is in Mrs Barrett's name and can't be seized. I do think death brings out the worst in people. It's embarrassing, isn't it? I mean, it is embarrassing. Of course, and think about it, think about it. You probably owe some, y'all watching right now, you probably owe somebody some money. One of your homies, or your homies probably owe you money. Think about how when you ask your homie for your money back, he treats you like DBLC. You're DBLC and you asking your homie for money, and he, t he talking to you like this. Like this. You can take. I'm not like this. He upset with you about the money you owe him. I mean, he's upset with you about him owing you money. That's tough. Motherfucker. Oh, let's see, I almost cursed. Let's see, I'm already banned. Mother effers be having some nerve. It's <laughs> embarrassing, isn't it? I mean, it is embarrassing to anyone. And I think it's even worse if it's not your debt. And it's your son's or your daughter's dead. But as Stuart speaks to Daniel, tensions begin to rise. Get off just... the property. You've got no right to be in there. I, I do have every right to be in there. You have walked yeah. in that house. Don't raise your voice, sir. Don't raise your voice, OK? I, I, well, you don't want to raise my voice, I will do. You've walked into my mom and dad's house That's without correct. being given entry. That's you correct, sir, yeah? No, we won't be leaving, sir, until you make a payment. You will be leaving because you'll be there all fucking night. Mm. And you know it, you know it, and I know it. Okay. Daddy. Okay. Your name and everything. I yeah, you can have my name, sir. No problem at all. My name's Mr. McCracken. Where you live as well. Yeah, no problem at all. That's fine. I've got no oh, right. no issue with that. We're based in Northwich and Cheshire, sir. Yeah. <laughs> I want to know where you live. Like, he was just about to up his address. Yeah, I bet you are, yeah. I bet you are. I don't accept any kind of threatening behaviour at all in any way, shape or form. At the end of the day, we are trying to deal with that situation. And there are various ways of controlling it. You just got to think about your end goal because we are there to collect a payment and nothing's going to stop us. After 10 minutes at the address, the agents aren't any closer to recovering the debt. Put my mum on the phone. Okay, there you go. What money are you after? Just to see what you can raise. So, to see what you can raise. He's got a tenner. Yes, mm. a token <laughs> gesture. He has no money, he works for himself. He doesn't work for free. No, he doesn't does work for free, but, the, but you know yourself, if you're self-employed, the work comes or it goes. It's just a shame to see parents getting dragged into issues that are out of their control. Well, guess what, If I was ever in that situation, my mum and dad would kill me. There's no question about it, but at the end of the day, they don't want to see your son in, in dire straits. Daniel's offer of £10. It's going to be bogus to say this out loud, but if it was my son, hey, you better go pay your your, your bills. If it was my daughter, I'd give her a little more leeway because, you know, daddy's a little girl. But my son, hey, go be a man in this tough world. I had bills when I was young, too. I'm not, yeah, hey, don't play with me. Simple. <laughs> ...towards his £6,600 debt is not enough for Stuart. He's obviously at work at the moment, so he'll be getting paid for jobs. So he must have some form of money to keep Diesel in his van. But then, it becomes clear that Daniel isn't at work after all. Right, OK, I thought you were out at work. I thought you were at work. Right, he's out of work. He's not... Got, mm -hmm. He's not... Does at he work. want to come back home, then? Sorry? Does he want to come back home and have a chat with us? He says, well, do you want to come back home and come and have a chat with him? No, not again, Danny. You can't do this. We've got neighbours looking here and everything. I don't want to try this time, Vic. Yeah. Hello, hi there. My name is Mr. Victor. Look, mate, we're here to work with you as much as possible. Yeah, yeah, you can work with me. But Mrs. Barrett has had enough. Give us the phone back, please. Oh, right, done. That's enough now. Yeah. She's going to lock the door. I've locked the last door. Yeah, yeah. No, they're in the park! 
Will Stuart and Vic be able to control this unpredictable situation and get See the... See what I'm talking about? Son won't even come home and deal with his problems at his mom's doorstep. Like, you, you're... You're... It's unfortunate, man. Six and a half thousand pounds they came for. Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor were looking to serve a writ on plasterer Daniel Barrett for a debt of over six and a half thousand pounds. We're here for uh, Mr. Barrett. Right, Daniel. Yeah, Daniel. That's yeah. my son. To the house. No, they're in the park! Now, with no sign of the defendant, Stuart and Vic need to calm Mrs. Barrett down. Hello. You can speak. You can speak through the glass. That's fine. Okay. But then suddenly, the police arrive on the scene. High Court enforcement agents executing yes. High Court writ. Right. What the now, hell? Now, Stuart and Vic must brief the officers. Police on this side. What you can be a force. High Court writ. It's high Court writ. So we're here to either collect goods or collect payments, one one thing or another. It appears that someone has called the police to report a break-in at the address. That's the writ of control. That's his name and that's the address. So this document gives us the right to come to this property and enforce. We get told that we've broken into places. You know, Blackpool agents don't, Blackpool police don't even know what they got going on. He trying to explain the writ to him. He, only, he looking like, what's this? Hey, partner, do you know what a high court, high court writ is? We get it's told that we're getting... stealing, but nine times out of ten, the police presence is vital because everybody wants a third opinion and they need the reassurance from the police of what we're doing is correct. Well, I'll go and speak to her. Yeah, no problem at all. Having established why the agents are at the address, the police go to speak with Mrs Barrett. Come on, Close that door. With the door open and the police inside, the agents his way in there. enter the house. They need to assess whether any assets inside belong to the debtor. But Stuart's presence aggravates Mrs. Barrett. If you calm down, I'll explain things to them, but you don't give people a chance. She, she's saying, she just explained to me then, um, that uh, nothing in this house actually belongs to us, so, so I, I can't verify that. No, we can't either. You can't thing. either. No. Despite Mrs. Barrett's protests, Stuart needs to make a list of items of value in the house under a control. Where is her bum ass son at? Bring your come home, dude. You're irritating. See, this is and this is another reason why I wouldn't help my son. Like, I, my son would know better than this. But, but like, no, I'm not, in the first place. I'm not lending no loans out. You get what I'm saying to my son? Maybe because this is. They be acting like they got too much going on. Hell nah. Old goods agreement. If any of the assets belong to Daniel, they can then be seized if he doesn't pay. But as Stuart goes to get his paperwork, Daniel's father appears on the scene. Morning there, sir. Have you forced anything? Sorry? I've seen this list, you know. Have you forced anything? No, not at all. No, you not at all. You permission, yeah? No, not, not at all, sir. Should we let you in? If the door's open, so we can walk through, it's called I've peaceful got entry. I've not allowed. No? Well, you can do so. Any, any, if that was the case, the officer would have, have arrested us. You made my this. life cry, pal. It appears that Mr. Barrett is aware of his son's financial situation. You've seen his sister? Yeah, I know. What do you need to do? The payment plan? I know. I've been to proceed with his sister, mate. 
I know. And the other thing is, no, you're no, a concert no. band spotted my driveway, yeah. I'll put my car in it. Okay, we'll, we'll move it. Yes, of course. Do you want me to explain what's happening, sir, or not? Because you're exactly I've like been, your son. I've been I'm trying solicitor. to explain the situation. I've got all the legal requirements, yeah. I've heard everything. What we're going to do is call the control. Sorry, sorry, I'm not walking away, sorry. Daniel's father doesn't seem very willing to discuss the matter. But Vic needs to make him understand Nobody the situation. talk? Hey, listen, I would have been making a list and checking it twice. Because DCBL is going to decide if these goods are yours or not. Debt collectors coming. My bad. That's ignorant of me. I feel bad for the parents, don't get me wrong. But the son and the way they act, man, not even talking like... At the moment, this is a high court active writ. Yeah, that's that's the only legal documentation, and that's why we're here today. And unfortunately, it's in your address because he does live here. Yeah. So it's up to you to prove yeah, that nothing in this property yeah. belongs to your son. It's not up to us to prove that it does. I think that's the bottom so line. Just get to the bottom line so these gentlemen got more important things to do. So yeah, I didn't phone them, sir. I didn't phone them. I'm not wasting their no. time. They're here Bye. for the bridge of peace. Mr. Barrett decides to call his son to try to get him to cooperate. Just speak to him. And thank you for calling. Don't be saying get him out of here, speak to him. Hello? Right, what we're gonna do is, and, and just let me, before you get worked up again, let me explain to you, because everybody's now talking to the all right? We're doing what's called the control goods agreement. Mr. Barrett, Mr. Barrett, Mr. Barrett, Mr. Barrett. I don't, I, no, I'm not. You need to come back to us to suggest what you realistically can afford monthly going forward. Daniel has made Vic a new offer. He, he's offered 30 pounds a month. I will put it to the claimant, but they, I can tell you now they won't accept it. He needs to raise funds, that's the bottom line. Daniel's offer of £30 a month means it could take 20 years to pay off the six and a half. Yeah, that's cap. 30 a month? Come on, bro. You gotta at least go three. 150 or something. £1,000 debt. Vic lays down an ultimatum. We'll make a list of what's here of value. It stays here, and we will give him 24 hours to contact us, to come back to us, to make a payment. If he fails to make a payment or he doesn't want to talk to us or come to an agreement, right? We have to got the authority to return. The agents must walk away without a payment for now. But if Daniel doesn't come up with an acceptable offer within 24 hours, Stuart and Vic will be back. Yeah, no. I've I seen a bit of history already. Homelessness in England has risen by a third since 2010. As councils struggle to cope with these rising numbers, thousands of families... I'm not saying no to you, but we've watched Benefit Streets already. ...are being placed in temporary accommodation outside their own borough. We're Black D and White D. Pause. 3.30 p.m. North... Three thirty p.m. North London. Turn right. High Court enforcement agents uh, yeah. Paul Bowhill and Steve Pinner are on. Oh, boys, man, they together today. I don't want to see Paul's son or speak whatever, whoever son. On their way to carry out an eviction. This is a repossession, which um, I think the property is up for auction because we've got to send the keys to the auctioneers. The name of the road. We watch police interceptors every Friday. We're so deep into police interceptors. Pause. The St. Margaret's. Tottenham, I think. The claimant has applied to the High Court to speed up the repossession. This means the current occupiers, Debbie and Dean Douglas, must leave the property today. It's here. But this is going to be one of the toughest evictions Paul and Steve have ever faced. Tough as in negativity or tough as in there's a lot of kids in the house? 
Oh, hello. hello. Uh, I'm looking for Debbie Douglas and Dean Douglas. No. They are not. Are you Douglas? Yeah. Okay. Could you call them for me, please? Thank you. Before he can continue his inquiries, Paul needs to find out how old the family member is. Hello, are you there? How old are you? 20. All right. OK. Can I just uh, talk to you? 20, my 20 is a very much level of cap that he didn't have to say. He could have went 18 on him. Have you got any I'm younger about 20. brothers or sisters? Yeah. How old are they? Is he really 20? No, I'm 15. Debbie Douglas is out collecting her youngest child from school. A neighbour comes round to see what's happening. Chase. Jason. Jason! Sorry. Jason. Jason. Come on, be upstairs. Yeah. With all due respect, you are a close friend of the family. Yeah, I'm a neighbour. Okay. I would have thought that um, she would have been um, told of this in advance. She was told by the county court that she had to be gone by a certain date. This has now since been transferred to the High Court, and with that, there is no notification of our attendance. Moments later, Debbie so and her youngest I... child arrive home. Hello. Hi. This is Douglas. Yeah, what's happening, Bruce? My name is Paul Bowhill. We're High Court Enforcement Agents. Okay. And we have a repossession order for this property. And why would that be? I don't know. Because this is my dad's house and he died. So the paper's in probate. Debbie claims she has a right to her late father's house. But her father's girlfriend, who didn't live with him in the house, disputed this and started legal action. It's like a family dispute, but it's my right. dad's house, but I don't, it shouldn't be, be getting possessed because the paperwork's in the solicitors. He told me none of us can do anything until we make an agreement to say who is entitled to what. The repossession order was granted by the county court. OK. Right, and it's now been changed to the high court. Yeah. <clears throat> which means we don't actually write and tell you we're Damn. coming. But the effect of it is that you have to leave the property now. But it's my dad's house. I just don't get it. This has been going on for 15 years. Wow. Debbie believes that legal proceedings are still underway, but the High Court writ means that her father's girlfriend has won her case and is in... Wow. Father's girlfriend? You're not even together? How long was they together, though? Like a common law type situation or what? Title to... Do y'all have that in the UK? In America, if you... Girlfriend and boyfriend with somebody more than ten years, they they consider it like common law, like you're you're married. You don't even have to get married. You're already you, they consider you're married. Evict Debbie and her children. Who like is Dean that. Douglas? That's my brother. Is he contactable? Do you think he'd know anything about this? He not because um, he knows as much as me. Yeah, this is a messed up case. It's sure. nice one for the books, isn't it? Doesn't affect the day. Be covered by that piece of paper. Totally. It's messed up. Clearly in shock, Debbie gets her mum on the phone. My dad lived here. He lived and he worked. He was a tailor. Yes. And he worked there. And he's... Mum? Remember the letters that I was bringing to the house that we were looking at? Well, they must have been real. Like, what am I supposed to do? Like, we went down that. They didn't even want to stay in this stupid house. See, that's my whole thing, man. When you start getting paperwork and they start saying certain things and they got certain stamps on it and seals, like, ain't no way they faking that because that's, a, that's a, a felony anyway to fake that type of paperwork. And if you thought it was fake, you should have reported it or something, but it's not on you, though, man. I feel bad. like this is one of those situations, like, dang. My 
my dad did his hair on his own for 15 years and he was bleeding to death and I came to look after him. And that's the fact he's kicking me out of my dad's house. <laughs> Family disputes are always going to create emotion because at the end of the day, it's a family. And obviously, something's happened for us to be there, and it's going to be awkward. Despite the complicated family feud, the agents are duty bound. Yeah, they it's their job. To enforce the eviction. The neighbor, Christine. By the way, some of the comments be looking. I know y'all be get y'all y'all don't got jobs, some of y'all. Not all of y'all, but like if you got a job, you about to get fired. You just close to getting fired. Cause it be sounding like y'all don't be doing y'all job. <laughs> y'all be mad at them for doing their job. Because Oh, I should, this shouldn't be... Ha well, I'm sure somebody thinks that of your, at your job, too, but you still execute your job, don't you? Steps in to help her friend. This is bogus, though. I ain't gonna lie. It's not a time to cry. It's a time to be strong. You didn't know about the case. You go back. Go back and fight for what's yours. Simple. Yeah, the you do. The of legal services, Great Britain, you kick out a woman with three children. No, 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 no. Great Britain didn't do it. His, your wife's, your dad's girlfriend did it. You must understand that we don't choose who we come and see. We are instructed by the High Court and commanded to repossess the property. So how can you be thrown out of your father's house? How can you be thrown out of your, the house that I don't have been that inherited? Answer. I don't have that answer And someone's for taking you. you to court. This is England. You didn't know anything about the case. This is England. It, it will be rectified. It will be rectified. The judge is, is human like you. But the priority is to get stuff for a couple of days, things you're going to need, identification, medication, phone charges, get down to the council. They will, you have children, they'll emergency house you. Then you can make an arrangement to come back and collect everything else. That is your first and foremost thing you have to do. Don't, do you get a, like a time period to go to the court and fight this? Because you need somewhere to stay tonight. Unfortunately, it can't be here. Mm. As Debbie has three children, she's entitled to emergency accommodation. But there's a problem. It's 4.45 p.m. and the housing office shuts in 15 minutes. If she can't get there in time, Debbie and her three children could face a night on the streets. It's not gonna happen. High Court Enforcement Agents, Paul Bowhill and... St I'm not gonna lie, Debbie, you got the right two people here for this situation. These are the biggest, hardest dudes on the, on, on, in the show. Steve Pillar, so. we're in North London, carrying out an eviction. We have a repossession order for this property. But the agent's visit came as a shock to the occupier, Debbie. It's my dad's house, but I don't, it shouldn't be, be getting repossessed because the paperwork's in the solicitors. Debbie claims she had a right to her late father's house, but her father's girlfriend took legal action and won the case in court. You're kicking me out of my dad's house. You need somewhere to stay tonight. Unfortunately, it can't be here. Now, Debbie and her family urgently need emergency accommodation or face a night on the streets. But the council's housing office shuts in 15 minutes time. Debbie's friend, Christine, calls the After Hours helpline. So you're calling on behalf of your friend who's, who's homeless? Yes. Oh, and, yeah. And, and, and the court enforcement officers are here right now. We have to leave. We have to vacate the property today. Now. OK. Mm. Just have one, one second for me. Mm. Is the, the person you're calling about, are they, do they reside in Harringay or are they, do they just live in a different borough? They're in Harringay. She's here right now. She's a bit distressed, but she's, she's here. I'm Debbie Douglas. Okay, Debbie Douglas, are you, are you the person who's homeless? Yeah. Oh, okay, sorry, okay, that's fine, Debbie. Um, they'll give you a call within the next hour. Uh, if you don't get a call by, let's say, half six, just give us a call back and we'll change it up for you. Okay, but you know, they've changed the locks already. They're just giving us a chance to um, speak with you. I understand. 
All we do is we take the information and we forward it over to the emergency response team. You know, they should they should call you back very shortly. That sounds like an amazing bunch of cap. That's a flawed. The council have said they'll. The council is a flawed system in itself, though. Call back within the hour, but Paul and Steve are now needed on another job. All my family are panicking now, and I don't have nowhere to charge the phone. So my, right now it's uncharged. The house phone keeps going on and off the charge. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Right. We'll wait. Just that we've got to, you know, we've got to. It's a rolling program, so normally we'd be hearing, not your problem, but we're here and gone in an hour, but we've now got... I know, I understand that. <clears throat> the family start to move some of their belongings to Christine's house, a few doors down. 20 minutes later, the council calls Debbie back. Are you working? I'm yeah. working, yeah. Yeah, don't you have any money? Could I book yourself in downtown for today? No, yeah, no. I work, yeah. Um, and the money that I work is part-time money, and my money is accounted for, so I don't have money in my bank. Because I don't, I don't have money in my bank like that, though. I don't. Because I can help the children, the 14 and the 9, but I can't help the 20-year-old, and I can't help you. They can't help me and so, Jason. So what's this about you can't help? Uh, you, are you, what's the situation? Sorry. What does that even mean? I can help the 14 and the 9 year old, but I can't help. Okay, I understand you can't help the 20 year old, but that's their mom, the 14 and the 9 year old. What are you implying right now? That you're going to take them and house them somewhere without their mom? Of course not. Your mo The mom is going to go. Because she works here, yeah. she has access to find us, and I can't, I can't find anything for her. Okay, the okay, local housing office, and they have to make the judgment. But if, for the kids, the 14-year-old, 9-year-old, I can help, I can pass So how's he going to help me? Worker, this is, this is not a social worker okay. problem. We're not telling you that the children um, are in any kind of danger. They're homeless. Yes? Do something about that, because that's what your job is about. Technically, she's still in the house, so she's not homeless. But when she leaves the house, she'll be homeless. Hey, do y'all hear? I told you. That's a flawed system. You hear how he talking to them? The agents are sitting right there. With the prospect of the family being split up for the night, Paul oh, man, steps in. Man, that's crazy. Hang, hang on, the enforcement officer wants to speak with you. Hello, my name is Paul Bowville. These people have been evicted. You said these people aren't homeless. They are. We have a high court. I, I, what I've said is, the minute they leave the house, they're homeless. Okay, would you please leave the house? Okay. Well, the only reason they're in the house is because yeah. the phone needs to be plugged into the into the system here. It's her mobile phone. They've now yeah. left the property. Okay, can I speak to the client, please? Well, no, because you've said she's got to be outside. Okay, but I didn't say that. I said she'd, she'd be homeless the minute she leaves the house. I'll call her back in the next five minutes. This is them being absolutely... That is terrible. That's the phone conversations that they got to deal with when they calling these people on the phone? Well, you're not homeless. You're still in the house. All right, let me walk outside so they can lock my stuff in. Like, you... Bro. Stupid. And we've been through this mill, waiting, all the process that you've been through, the drama that you've been through today, we've done a dozen times. They're obliged to house you. Today is not a good day. Councils are frustrating for us because, you know, we try and talk to them sometimes on behalf of the tenant, but you have to understand from the other side of the coin is that there are so many people on the system that I don't know if they've got enough staff or funds to deal with everything. Over an hour after Christine first spoke to the council, they call back with an unusual request. You need to go to the police station with the, with with the, the document, and I'm going to call in there and speak to the police officer to verify the document. OK, I'm going, I'm going there right now. Which and police station? How, I'm going to Tottenham, Tottenham Police Station. All right. Um, less, in about, in about, say, 10 minutes. 
minutes. Yes, it's just across from my place. I'm gonna make sure you call me because I don't want to be waiting there. All right. Thank you. Bye bye. No cap, that's not that strange of a request because who who else is gonna verify? Can't fake a police office. Despite the fact that the writ is a standard legal document and proof of the eviction, the council has asked Debbie to get it verified by the police. But after spending an hour at the police station, it's not good news. The homeless unit are saying they don't understand the paperwork. So... Understand. What is there not to understand from a high court? So I'm very saddened at the way things have turned out and the way my friend has been treated. Um, when she needs help, she's getting no help from anywhere. Debbie and her family are now in a desperate situation. I don't want to sound like an a-hole, but how's your friend for the night? Put it in your house. It's 7.30 p.m. Paul and Steve have been with the family for four hours, but they won't leave until Debbie and her children have a bed for the night. Paul urges Christine... Told you, Paul and them, y'all with the right people. ...to call the council one last time. Make the phone call again to the council. We've executed dozens and dozens of writs up here. They must have seen a writ. They must be aware of the circumstances. Christine makes the call. Hi, I um, called you a um, couple of hours ago. My friend is out on the streets with her children. Are you categorically now telling me that she is not going to be rehoused with the children tonight? Are you categorically I saying I, that? I can't confirm or deny anything because I'm not the homeless team. Have you had a call back from the social service? No, no, no. It's over an hour right, now okay. from the time we got from the police station. And we've, we've had no call. We're out on the street with the children outside the house. OK. All I can do then for you is to reapply for the homelessness for them to call you back again. Because yes. we're waiting for their call. So transfer if you can you. Transfer, transfer us to them, please. We don't transfer, I'm afraid. They will have to call you back. This is a trash system. It's trash. OK, I'll be waiting. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. The processing of their claim for emergency housing. And low-key, I'd be so irritated. Why should, why the ma'am, why ma'am sounds so jolly on the other end? Like, chill out. May well take four to six hours. And we know from feedback that we have, that's about average. I think the whole system is absolutely outrageous. It's now eight o'clock at night. With no offer of assistance from the council yet, Paul allows the family back into the house. Yeah, Forty-five back. minutes later, an officer from the emergency housing team calls back. So, she's got nowhere to stay? Yes. At all? She's on the streets right now with the friend. kids. Yes, I am. So, why, why can't you accommodate her tonight and they can... This is the worst. Yo, because it's not her responsibility. But I did ask the same question, but I didn't think they would ask it. Go to Aiken's house in the morning. It is not my duty to house her tonight. It is your duty, not mine. Right, okay, you're a friend and you're taking a Yes, I'm a friend. I've got four children. Okay. So my house is full. Your house is full, yes, yes. Okay. Oh, it doesn't even matter. You shouldn't have to explain that. But any other friends or relatives she can stay with? No, she hasn't. Okay, the reason why we, 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 we're sorting this information out is because at the moment, we usually um, get information from our bed and breakfast, and a lot of them are fully booked, but we're trying to get some more information. So just one second, please. Okay, I wouldn't even mention a 20 year old son. There is a better breakfast in Ealing. Ealing? Where's Ealing? Ealing, yes. How are we going to get How are we going to get to Ealing this night? Oh, 
And the children have to be in school in the morning. It they got a sick day. would take over an hour for Debbie and the children to get across London to Ealing. I think the council are absolutely behaving abominably. <clears throat> I don't think it's fair at all. This is the first time we've witnessed the council in four seasons. We ain't never seen this. This is just ridiculous. This is wild. Yeah, you know, it's now nine o'clock at night. It's okay. No, don't be going on about a friend. No, 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 no. Don't put, don't put, no, don't put no guilt on me. Don't put your, your, your what you're meant to do. Don't put it on me and try. Yeah, that's crazy that the council is doing this. To play, play games with. Don't play games. It is your duty to house her. Don't, don't you dare. Don't you dare try to. She, they finna hang up on him. Blackmail me by saying, as a friend, that I am meant to house her. There will be no call into Ealing without you providing the transportation to get there. I don't need no social worker because we cannot get to Ealing this night with, without some support. Thank you for nothing. Exasperated by the situation, Paul decides to take action of his own. Yes, I'm wondering if you've got a, a res sorry, a room vacant tonight in North London. Paul books the family into a local hotel. This is an unusual case. We don't do this for everybody, trust me. Mm. But this is a, this, we're seeing what appears to be, well, certainly the injustice of the housing system, mm. the emergency housing. I mean, that's too silly for words. Mm -hmm. We don't. Yeah, this is. I'm telling you, you had the good, you had the good guys with you today. I knew it was going to end in this. <laughs> Tougher to help with hotel rooms as a matter of course. We will only use those as a last resort. I wouldn't see a mother and children out on the street on a winter's night. Tight. We would do what we would consider to be the reasonable thing. It's now 10 p.m. So if there's an issue. Yeah. We'll sort it. Paid for, done. Thank you. Thank right, you. and breakfast is included. Uh... Turn all the lights off on your way through, please. After seven hours at the property, Paul and Steve finally complete the eviction. Thank you, Christine. This was... I ain't gonna lie, bro. This is... This, this, I mean... Government aid type systems, this is what you run into. A real fighter. Thank you. Thanks to Paul and the enforcement company, Debbie and her children will have somewhere to sleep for the night. But the family face an uncertain future. Paul and Steve have experienced a heartbreaking situation. But in Stuart and Vic's next case... I haven't got that money in my bank at the moment. They come across a man... This is our man, isn't it? Since the start of the financial... Since the start of the financial crisis in 2007, personal debt in the UK has increased by nearly £300 billion. Now, nearly 9 million people across the UK are struggling with debt. It's a.m. Harden, Wales. We, uh, well, we in Wales. We starting to see the same uh, comments every, like the same little written stuff every time. Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor are back on the road with a writ to recover over £4,000 owed by plumber Justin Westbrook. Have you seen that outside? No, no, mate. Frosty this morning. If Mr Westbrook can't or won't pay his debt, Stuart and Vic have the right to seize goods and vehicles from the property. The cash car. We'll take that. Cash car ain't going anywhere. Come on, Vic, let's go wake somebody up. Light. Kitchen lights on. I hope someone's coming now. Have they seen you, Vic? Oh, I saw her. She closed the door. Still there? 
can't see. They've closed the door now. You see, they've walked back in. There's someone at home, but no one is answering the door. Then Mr. Westbrook's daughter opens a window upstairs. Hi, my name is Mr. Victor. I'm a court enforcement agent. And I'm after Mr. Justin Westbrook. Well, he lives here, though. Yeah, but he's gone to work. You need to get him on the phone. We need to speak to him urgently. While Mr. Westbrook's daughter tries to track her father down, Vic calls the office to run a check on the family car in the driveway. Hey, John, you all right? Good. Can you do an HPI for me? If it's free of finance, the agents can take it away if Mr. Westbrook can't or won't pay. Oh, that's interesting. While the agents wait for news about the car, a handwritten note appears through the door. This is Justin's number, ring this. Right, OK. <laughs> Been sent a love letter, but on the opposite so side of the this letter, Stuart calls Mr. Westbrook's number. Hello. Hello, is that Mr. Westbrook? Mr. Again. Westbrook, good morning. My name is Mr. McCracken. I'm the High Court Enforcement Agent. We're here to collect a total yeah. amount of £4,341.39, sir. Um, um, obviously, as you're aware, if it's not paid, we are here to much? take control of goods. Yeah, I mean, no, no. How much? We're here to collect a total yeah. amount of £4,341.39, sir. Um, um, obviously, as you're aware, if it's not paid, we are here to take control of goods. Yeah, I'm in Telford at the minute, in traffic, yeah. and I can't get any access to any money at the minute. What I'm trying to say is I haven't got that money in my bank at the moment. Right. Well, I'll ring you back as soon as I possibly can, because I'm yeah. still trying to sort it out. No, I understand. I'll speak to you shortly. Stuart and Vic give Mr Westbrook some time to see if he can raise the funds. Hello. Hey, John, you all right? The agent's office calls back with news about the debtor's car. Excellent. No longer on finance. Boom. Boom. That's it. Cheers, John. Thanks for that. Get it clamped. The car is no longer on finance, so Stuart and Vic are able to seize it. <coughs> Who wants to see the car being taken away? I don't ever want to be in that situation. I don't think I could bear being in that situation, watching my... They're definitely going to pay you. I literally, somebody blessed me with a car, man. Y'all remember, bro, I was on the bus this whole time when I've been in Florida. I've been in Florida almost two years. I was on the bus up until like two months ago. I'd be devastated if somebody did that. Pride and joy being taken away. Half an hour later, Mr. Westbrook has still not come up with any offer of payment. But Stuart wants to give him one last chance to settle his debt before taking a prized family asset. Hello? Hello, is that Mr. Westbrook? Where do I actually stand? What will happen is, sir, at 9 o'clock, if the payment isn't made, it gets transferred to what they call Stage 3 enforcement, which means the amount right. that, which means the amount goes to £5,171.49. We'll then be contacting recovery for the vehicle to be removed. But Mr Westbrook has news for Stuart. It's not my vehicle, sir, is it? You know what I mean? Right, whose vehicle is it? It's my wife's. At the moment, we've seen no paperwork relating to that vehicle. How do I prove to you that that vehicle is my wife's? We'd need Bill a sales sale. invoice, sir. Surely. Yep. So it's you shortly. Right. Stuart needs to get to the bottom of who owns the car. Inside the house, Mr Westbrook's daughter has the finance company on the line. Hello. My name is Mr McCracken, I'm a High Court Enforcement Agent. The finance company confirmed that the car is now free of finance, but the loan was in Mrs Westbrook's name. Meanwhile, Vic... Hello. ...gets a call from the office. Hi, John. Mr. Oh, brilliant. Oh, brilliant. Thank you very what, much, what happened? John. Cheers, bye. What happened? Hey, Stuart. The finance company has confirmed the vehicle was in the name of Mr. Justin Westbrook. Mr. Really? Mm. Because I've just spoken to a woman on the phone there. And I went, right, okay, so whose name was it? And so it's in the missus. That wasn't the finance group, obviously, Mr. McCracken. Elmore Fudd got it. Correct. It's probably both their names, possibly. It's in, it's in joint names. That's what it is, it's in joint names. 
It oh, seems well. that the car belonged to both Mr and Mrs Westbrook. But as his name appears on both the finance documents and the writ, the agents have the right to Let's seize take it. Take it, yeah. I mean, you can pay today, but in 20 minutes the car's going. It's been over an hour since Stuart first spoke with Mr Westbrook, and the debtor hasn't shown any signs of payment. The agents have no option but to arrange for the car. It's only three minutes in the, in left in this episode. Are we really doing this? Are to be removed. How are you? Good, good. Um, how long can I send me with this vehicle? Make the call, Jane. Make the call. Okay. But as they wait for the recovery... Bro, it's literally been two seasons, two and a half seasons since we've seen them take anything. Team. A white van arrives. It's Mr. Westbrook. What's going on here? This is our man, isn't it? Yeah. As we've been waiting, we've seen a white van pull up. Two guys have been in it. He's been dropped off, what we believe is a defendant. And then he's done... Imagine a grown man scaling a wall to get into his back house to avoid enforcement agents. What we call in the trade a Spider-Man attempt, which was climbing up on the wall there and then climbing around the back of his garage. But Mr Westbrook is still making no attempt to settle his debt. If you want to try and hide from the matter, it's only going to make situations worse. I don't know why people do it. If you just speak to us and work with us, we will work together to get this resolved. Take it away. Ah! What's up? Let's, <laughs> <laughs> ah, let's get negative. Team I don't know why this is bringing me so much joy right now, but it's it's not because of the situation. It's not because they're taking a car away from the family. But one, the dad is acting like an a-hole. And two, we haven't seen them get negative like this in a long time. To take away Mr. Westbrook's vehicle. If you don't want to pay your bills and you want to hide, then do that. And the door was open? Dang. We don't want to be taking vehicles. We would rather get a payment. But we've got an asset there that'll cover the balance. So if you don't want to pay it, then uh, we'll be removing yeah. it. It is what it is today. That's got to get paid one way or the other. My bad. Let's get negative. <laughs> Did we get a call? Imagine not even coming outside to, to argue. Feel that. Nothing. Oh, okay, he got it back. All right. Dad playing it. That's crazy. Well, I left the area. Six weeks, damn. Of course not. That's crazy. But I can guarantee you, both of them, whoever spoke to them, lost their job. I need to go through sensitivity training or something, man. TLL, leave a like, comment, man. Turn on your post notification bells, man. I'm gone.